This is what the warning says, everyone, at 2.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Expect damage to roofs, siding, and trees. Where? Right here. My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. This is going to be a very interesting trip. For this week's adventure, we're out here at Lone Wolf Mountain, and here in a few minutes, I will be setting up the DOD Ishi One Pole Tent. This is going to be somewhat of a testing grounds episode. Let me explain to you all what's going on. To make a long story short, there is an episode that I recommend that you watch. It involves the DoD Outdoors Ishii One Pole Tent and the response that I received from the company after I waterproof tested their product and it failed. This is a TP tent. It's a good sized tent. It's fairly inexpensive. Initially, I was very impressed with it. But once I brought it out here to Lone Wolf Mountain to waterproof test it in a test night episode, the tent failed miserably. It leaked from at least two locations. One I can figure out, one I can't. One is a mystery. In the episode where I go over the DoD Outdoors response, in a nutshell, they said this. They believed that the version of the tent that I had was a counterfeit or possibly like a factory second. It had some sort of quality control issue. They thought that the seller who sold it to me on eBay was basically selling a malicious product. They knew that it had some sort of problem and that's why it failed. And because of this, they sent me a brand new tent to waterproof test. That's what this episode is all about. Do I believe that the initial version was a counterfeit? Do I believe that it had some sort of like factory second issue or maybe someone used it and abused it and then sold it to me? I do not. And I'll go into as why I don't think that here in just a little bit. For now, let's get the tent out. Let's go ahead and set it up. This is the brand new version straight from the factory, according to DoD Outdoors. As it stands right now, I do not have much time. There is rain on the way. In fact, the weather for this trip is going to be very, very interesting. Take a look at what is coming our way. We are that blue dot. We have lots of rain, maybe some storms and potentially by tomorrow morning, snow. All right, let's get this set up real quick, everyone. Luckily, setting up this tent is very easy.
As you all can see, folks, the Ishii one pole tent has been set up. It's ready to go. It's been fully guyed out. It's ready for the weather. I set this up to the best of my memory the same way that the previous version was set up. Because of the previous issues that I had with this tent, I'm not going to set up my bedding. I'm not going to inflate my sleeping pad, get out the sleeping bag, nothing like that. And that's because this tent is going to have to prove itself to be waterproof before I go through that much effort. If I find that this tent leaks, we are heading to the cabin tonight. Let's take a second here and let's talk about the leaking that I had with the previous version of this tent. Again, one area I could not pinpoint. The other area, I knew exactly what had happened. So the area that I could tell where it was leaking from was from the zipper. There is a storm flap that goes over the zipper and it's about one inch wide. That is not enough protection for that zipper. It was obvious that rain was making it behind that storm flap, through the zipper, down the walls, into the tent. Unfortunately, DOD Outdoors did not address this aspect in my discussions with them concerning the leaking of the previous version of this tent. Their main claims was that this was some sort of malicious sale. I have compared this tent to the previous version, the version that leaked. The Ishii tent that I purchased was not a counterfeit. In fact, it came from the exact same lot as this one. All of the production code match, every aspect is exactly the same all the way down to the way that the seam tape has been applied. When it comes to the secondary source of leaking, I'm not entirely sure where that came from. With the rain event that I was testing the tent out in, it was not windy, really wasn't even breezy, so it's not like the rain went through the vent or anything like that. It made its way through a seam somewhere. Somewhere over here, I believe. After that test night episode went up where the tent failed, one of my viewers was in contact with DOD Outdoors through Facebook and they asked them about this tent, whether or not it's waterproof. The company says it is, as long as you close that vent. As you can see here, the vent is closed. And also with the testing that I did, it was closed as well. Closed just as much as this one here. Anyways, folks, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. Let's see what happens. Again, if you have any questions, make sure to check out the comparison video. More than likely, your questions will be answered in that episode. Now, my friends, I need to begin thinking about what I want to do here. Hmm. Or maybe I want to do it this way. I might do that actually. Hmm. I'll think about this for a second. What I need to do is set up a tarp here. Maybe this side of the truck or the other side of the truck. That way I can have a dry place to chill because rain is supposed to begin fairly soon. Let's check the weather real quick. It is currently 50 degrees. It's pretty warm, everyone. Showers likely, then showers and possibly a thunderstorm after 4 a.m. Chance of rain, 100%. Half an inch possible. Tonight, showers, possibly a thunderstorm. Before 9 p.m., showers likely afterwards. Chance, 100%. Again, half an inch is possible. Tomorrow, rain and snow showers before 2, then snow showers. As far as accumulation goes, maybe up to 3 inches. That's about it. As you all can see, I have the tarp set up. I have the long side basically blocking the wind. I have this side open so I can get some good airflow. If I need to, I can seal up this side and even the front if I want. I have a number of tarps with me, so I could do just about any sort of setup that I want. A few years ago, everyone, there was an episode, I think it was an overnight adventure, where I took the uh, tent stakes and I threw them into the ground just like I did a little bit earlier. After that episode, I received like the nastiest email from this woman. She said that her kids were watching this and now they're throwing stuff like all over the house. Instead of explaining to her kids that there's a right time, a right place to do things, she writes me an email. Interesting parenting, what do you all think?
Since the weather's been so nice recently, we've begun working on some spring projects at the house. I have a ton of little scraps that are going to be perfect for burning. What I have inside of this bag is a combination of cedar and white pine. Winter weather advisory was just issued for the area starting tomorrow. <laughs> Talking about my house, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but it was built in the 1940s by my great grandfather. My father was raised by his grandparents and he grew up in that house, which is very special to me. Not only did my dad grow up there, but my kids did as well. It's amazing to me as I'm working on this house with my father, just how incredibly well built it was. My grandfather, he went out into the woods and he got what he needed to build that house. Some of the beams in the basement are locust posts and they've been there since 1940. How about that? Anyways, everyone, let's take a quick look at the radar. It's on its way. It is on its way.
All right, everyone, this is what's taking place. A severe thunderstorm warning has been issued for this area. Winds at 60 miles an hour are coming. I was over there on top of that hill filming, got the alert and just took off. I'm hearing thunder, it's beginning to rain, and I have to decide what I'm going to do real fast, real fast. There's nothing I could do about the tent. It is what it is, it's there. But I have to decide about this tarp. I don't have much time. This is what the warning says, everyone. At 2.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, severe thunderstorms located along a line, moving at 60 miles an hour. Expect damage to roofs, siding, and trees. Where? Right here. The winds are definitely picking up. You can hear it, everyone. There's a rush to the air. It's a combination of wind and heavy rain. I've got my rain pants on, rain jacket on. Let's see what happens. That is a white wall of heavy rain and it's coming in right now, folks. As it stands, my friends, the storms are here. It's raining, it's windy, but so far, so good. Nothing close to 60 miles an hour, thank God. I'd say the strongest wind gust so far, maybe 25, 30. You might be able to see it here, but this wall is really coming in. This material is taking a ton of force. This entire thing is like a sail, basically, and it's catching all of that wind and so far, so good in here. I'm very well protected. I am dying to know whether or not this tent is leaking. All in all, the rain hasn't been that heavy, but it's been coming down. Here in a little bit, we'll check the radar and see when it's gonna stop. We'll see if there's going to be a break in the weather and then we'll check on the tent, if at all possible.
you can likely hear, it's raining rather hard at the moment. It's coming down. This is what I wanted as far as the test goes for this tent. My plan was not to bring it out in a severe thunderstorm, but in a way that does prove a good point. If you're going to take a tent out into the wild, it needs to be able to protect you. It's super important. The same goes for even a campground, really. You set up your tent, you go to bed, a storm comes in during the night, there's not much you can do. That's why you need a good tent. And that's why I do these tests. It's all about supplying information so you can make the best decision for yourself. Based on what I'm seeing here on the radar, the severe thunderstorm basically was squashed by the mountains as it approached. That is a phenomenon that takes place from time to time. You have these strong storms, they come up against the mountains, and they just wring themselves out like a towel. So by the time they cross the mountains, there's not much left. So we're getting rain, we're getting some thunder, but this is not a severe thunderstorm. As an update everyone, it is now 4.08. The temperature is 48 degrees and dropping. The thunderstorms have moved on, but it's continued to rain. Strong wind gusts come and go, but so far, nothing too bad. I have to be honest, my curiosity is definitely getting to me. I wanna go out there, open up that tent, and take a look on the inside, but I'm going to hold off until the rain stops. That is a problem when it comes to a tent of that design. There's no way to get in and out of the tent when it's raining without the inside getting soaked. Maybe you all can hear me. I could just barely hear myself think this rain is so heavy at the moment. Now my friends, this is nice. The only bad thing is, the winds are really, really picking up. They're getting quite strong now. Wind gusts around 30 miles an hour, maybe a little bit higher. You 
can now see my breath. That's a good indicator that the temperature is dropping. It is absolutely coming down right now. Quite a bit of thunder. I'm seeing some flashes. This evening I figured I would share some of my experiences in storms. Namely, some of the craziest lightning I've ever seen. As it is right now, it's raining so hard, I can't even hear myself think. So, <laughs> I'm going to eat dinner, I'll shut the camera off, and I'll bring you all back in just a little bit. As you all can see, I'm now inside of the truck. I decided to basically come in here because it's a little bit quieter. It's raining so hard out there that I really can't talk to you all. This is a little bit better, but not a whole lot. Anyways, it's still raining out there. I'm seeing flashes of lightning. As far as the wind goes, it's pretty much calmed down, which is a good thing. It's really not that late. So I might as well finish up my coffee. It's only about 5.45 right now. After four hours of rain, it has finally ceased. There's another line of showers and storms coming in. While we have this break, let's go ahead and check on this tent. Did it leak? Let's find out.
<laughs> okay, the tent did leak. The tent leaked in the exact same locations. So we have moisture right here. And we have moisture over here. Maybe you can see it better that way. And again, over here. Let me summarize the situation here. After four hours of rain, the tent has leaked again in two locations. One is at the door. And again, this goes back to that storm flap. It's too small to keep the rain out. And just as with the previous tent, there's an issue on the other side of the tent. There's something wrong here. There's some sort of defect. I'm not exactly sure what it is, and I'm not sure where the rain's coming in at. No matter what, everyone, this is two DOD tents, one pole tents. They leak, plain and simple. They are not waterproof. For the rest of the night, I am done. It's going to continue raining. In the morning, we'll take a closer look at this tent. We'll look at the leaking and we'll try to figure out what exactly has happened here. One issue we know of. The other issue, somewhat of a mystery. Well, everyone, I knew the tent was going to leak right? I knew it was going to leak through that storm flap, but I did not expect it to leak on the other side. That was a little bit surprising. I figured that was just some sort of fluke with like the initial tent that I purchased, but obviously there's some sort of issue there. I had high hopes for that tent, but everyone, that's how it goes. It simply did not work out. That's why we do the testing that we do. And here we are <laughs> in the, in the cabin of shame. <laughs> We had to do the walk of shame all the way up to the cabin. The DOD tent failed. That's okay. I'm in for a good night, a comfortable night. This is why we have the cabin here at Lone Wolf Mountain. It's so that I can test out these tents and I don't have to be like super, super uncomfortable. The tent failed. I can come up here to the cabin, get some good sleep, and then wrap it up. It's now time for me to relax. Oh, man. That feels good. Good morning, everyone. Cheers. Let's see. It is nine o'clock. I've been up for a couple of hours. More than anything, just kind of warming up. It's not all that cold, but it's around, I don't know, 38 degrees, something like that. Supposedly, the temperature today is going to drop steadily, and then it's going to snow later on tonight. Sounds good to me. Oh, yeah. Coffee time. As for last night, I slept, but I didn't sleep all that great. That tent was on my mind for most of the night. And I was thinking about, like, where is it leaking from? And I have two theories, with one being more likely than the other. Theory number one is that it's leaking from two points, from the zipper flap and from the vent. Theory number two is that it's leaking only from the zipper flap, the storm flap. When I go back out there, I'm going to pay close attention to that storm flap and see if there's any sort of seam tape on the inside. 
If there's not, that could be the source of leaking. That would explain why we have water basically all the way around that tent. As far as my testing goes with that tent, I am done. I'm not going to do any more. Two rain tests, multiple setups, multiple trips out. I, I can't test this thing out anymore. It has a problem, don't buy it. I'm going to contact DOD Outdoors and see if they would like it returned, if they would like to take those samples and maybe try to figure out what's going on so they can improve the design of these tents. It's going to be my recommendation to DOD Outdoors that they pull this product from the market. It's simply not safe. It's not waterproof. A tent that's not waterproof makes no sense. No sense at all. I don't know if they'll pull it from the market. I have no idea. Maybe it's a bad batch. When I compared the new version to the old version, it had the same lot numbers. So maybe it's an issue with that lot. I really don't know. I have no idea. It's now up to the company to figure out what's going on and to solve this issue. With DoD Outdoors moving into the North American market, are they going to do what's right and pull this product from the market? or are they going to continue to sell it? I have no idea. You never know, they could always pull a palm molly and say that I'm full of shit and then attack me, but then later apologize and then pull the product from the market. What a mess. <laughs> Do you all remember that with the Stove Hut 70? Let's get out there, let's go take a look at that tent and let's wrap up this adventure. Not a whole lot has changed here. The floor is wet and it's wet all over. This is what I wanted to look at. So we have this storm flap right here. We have the stitching right here. When you flip this over, take a look. There's no seam tape on this. There's nothing to stop water from coming through those stitches. It is possible that water's making its way through the vent. Maybe it's not seam taped either. I kind of doubt that though, because it's not leaking on the other side with the vent. That's why I'm thinking the issues with the storm flap, the stitching, and the lack of seam tape. In the end, that's only an educated guess. From this point on, it's up to DOD Outdoors to figure out what the issue is. I am going to recommend to the company that they pull this product from the market. There is an issue here. Two different tents. It's possible that the issues were with a specific manufacturing run, or it could be a larger scale defect. Nonetheless, this product needs to be pulled from the market, as it simply cannot keep the users safe inside. A tent that's not waterproof is dangerous. And I have to admit, it's going to be interesting to see how the company responds to this. Ultimately, it's in their hands. This has been an interesting test a second test of the DoD Outdoors Ishii One Pole Tent. From this point forward, I am done with this tent unless the company does something to change it. Make sure to comment down below, share your thoughts. What do you all think about this tent? What do you all think about the failures? Again, this tent failed in the exact same locations, the exact same places as the version that I purchased. A special thank you goes out to DoD Outdoors for sending me this tent. Unfortunately, it failed just as the other did. The sun's out, it's snowing, it's sleeting, and it is so incredibly muddy folks this is a mess i tell you what i'm going to begin packing up the truck breaking everything down i am done i'm not gonna mess with this you can hardly walk on it it's as slick as ice and it's just pure mud i appreciate you all joining me for this trip it has been fun talk about interesting right hopefully this episode will do some good hopefully the company will take this off of the market redesign it and we'll take a look at it together in the future but um everyone thank you so much for joining me for this trip I appreciate you all. I want to say strength and honor. Be good, be safe. I will see you all around again soon. Bye, folks. Mm -hmm.